Okay, so uh, I'm just going to grab our last uh, texture that we made in high poly uh, sculpt, which is this uh, kick plate for the door. Um, and I'm just going to grab it and throw it over to our uh, door spot here in the bottom right hand corner. And just place this in the place, uh, scaling it to fit it to the right size. Um, okay, so there's our, our reference of our uh, kick plate here. And I have the normal map uh, around here somewhere. Um, there it is. So I'm just going to bring it up and line it up here. And then uh, it's a little bit off scale so I'm just going to throw it on a different uh, mode for um, difference and line it up to scale it down just so the texture uh, lines up right. I'm going to flip it back to our normal and I'm going to bring this down and uh, just move these uh, rivets manually um, just so it fits right and then I have to move a couple more of these uh, rivets down to extend it and that way it just fits on our, our original uh, texture sheet better um, and I'm just going to cover up this, this line here, this extra line in here and finish the bottom off and then merge it and rename it and so now we can move on to our next pieces um, I did a few of these pieces before I started recording but um, I'm going to go into the process of actually uh, showing the rest of the pieces. Um, they're pretty much like the same concept, so um, I'm just going to start, continue on. Okay, um, I'm just going to uh, show you a good example of depth, uh, the kind of depth we can achieve with using Endo. Um, so first of all, we have this pattern here that we uh, would like to turn into a normal, um, and we have this cut in section here, um, this post pole here. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, let's see here. So, make a new layer um, and first I'm going to go for this uh, texture here. Um, what I want to do on this one is something new that I haven't done yet in this uh, in this tutorial is uh, using the pen tool to then make a shape and then make the normal out of it. So um, if you're unfamiliar with the pen tool, it's over here. It'll create a vector line that will allow you to create a selection of it and then make the normal out of it. So what I'm doing is clicking here, clicked here, and then if you hit alt click on the point, um, it will give you a uh, point that's not uh, has attachments to the other point. Uh, see if, if I keep going with this point here, it's now going to curve the wrong way. So basically, what click alt clicking on the point does is it um, there's no history on the, the previous point, so you can move it however you want. Um, if I was to do this point without clicking the alt here, it would give me a really strange result because of the uh, um, the pull the the, uh, the uh, pull tabs here um, which you can use to adjust the point um, but we don't want that so I'm going to hit delete and if you all click on a point too also you can hit delete and just, just delete that point uh, so I'm going to click here I'm going to click here left button, mouse button click and then alt click here and then click here and um, a lot of times Illustrator uses uh, a pen tool for its vector um, graphics, but uh, it's also in Photoshop. But if you're unfamiliar with how to use the pen tool, um, I'll kind of go over some simple tricks and tips here. Um, this point here isn't really needed um, because when you're using the pen tool, you the least amount of points that you uh, make um the better it is because the more points you make um the more problems you can run into so
to create this line here, I would probably click right here and then just pull on it. But see, if you pull on it first and then try to make this point, it's going to give you that bad thing again. So if you click Alt, it will get rid of that. Um, or if you didn't want to click Alt there, let's say, you know, further on down the line that we're going to run into that, um, you can click here and don't stretch the point all the way to where the 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 uh where you want it at but just click right here and this is more of a click on our future points so if you click right here and then click again you're not going to get a huge distortion of your point and then you can continue on and then later on if you want to go back to this point you can click control on it and then move the move the um, handlebars. Um, so that's kind of the best way of using it is to create your points and then go back and modify them later um, just by clicking on control and then checking on the point and then these two pull uh, bars uh, will let you do the rest. Um, so that's kind of a, see that now we're getting that thing there so hit alt and that will get rid of the previous history of that last point and uh, okay so uh, I'm just gonna fast forward through this part here um, uh, these are all kind of repetitive actions so um, I'm gonna still show them in the fast forwarding uh, part of it but uh, uh, there's no need to go into it second by second So now we're down to the bottom, so I'm going to go back up to the top and hit shift and then click right here and that makes a straight line that we don't have to do the other end now, we don't have to do the right side. So now that we got our points done here, I'm just going to go back in and zoom in a little bit more and uh, see if we can go back and, and modify any of these more of these points to make this selection just a little bit better. I think I did a pretty good job at the... Uh, um, this is now be my second time doing it because I already did it previously in this tutorial to kind of see what we need to do. But uh, so this looks pretty good. This is a little bit off right here, so I'm just going to move that. Um, you, have, you can also select on the handlebars to move stuff. Um, this point here is not really necessary. Oop. If you uh, end up deleting a whole section or the whole thing, just Control Z it. Good. <clears throat> um. Check this point here, and I think that's about good. Okay, so now uh, we have. If we go over to pass here, we have. Uh, a new path we're going to rename it just uh, B just to have a, a different name from the, the first one um, which was the one previous site I did while making this tutorial the um, first time uh, so now all we have to do is control click on this box here and that gives us our selection um, make a new layer and then alt uh, backspace will fill in our selection I'm going to copy this layer, go up to edit, and transform, flip horizontally, and then move this over so it fits there. And then I'm going to merge all three of these layers. I think the one was blank, um, but um, if we control click here, we can see that up here is good, but down here is some missing information so I'm just going to paint that in black okay um, I'm just going to hit alt backspace to make sure we have everything in that 
make sure it's a solid black and then you can click on the uh, selection to normal uh, box here wait for this to get done and there we go we don't need the ba black background one but I'm just gonna call this and save it as uh, uh, black uh, selection okay so now we're gonna kind of change this to show a little bit more control that looks pretty good um, not much really I want to do much besides maybe soften it a little bit okay so now we have that but we're missing all these little details in here um, so you could go in there and you can do a bunch of pen tool and, and, and make all these little selections these feathers and these leaves but um, what I'm going to do actually is uh, um, go back to our original texture or the uh, picture and make a selection and I'm just going to copy this here of this design hit control C, control J, it makes a new layer of that selection and then I'm going to go in and make a normal of the actual bitmap picture and what we're going to do is we're going to use both of these to match up um, and show the uh, show a, com a combination of both of them so um, this is what it looks like in the bitmap so we're kind of it's kind of messed up right now so if we go to chiseled uh, no we want to keep it on smooth uh, size move that down the bevel I think in boss works pretty good um, contrast bring that down depth bring it down softness I'm gonna bring it up and already we're getting a pretty good pretty good uh, result here um, we want that up and I think I used half round before or was it cone? No, that's not it. Uh, valley. And you can experiment with these different options here, but I think I used. Um, you just use the regular one, just the linear. Okay, so that's there. So now I'm going to take the pen tool uh, information and put it underneath this bitmap. Um, and then I'm going to turn this off and turn my normal map off and so far we have that and then I'm going to go to a blend and go to soft light and to turn this back on to see our result this is just the layer that endo creates for you uh, to show a normal map um, so that looks alright, but I think I used overlay. And see now that's without our hand drawn, and that's with the hand drawn. This is with both. Um, so we kind of get a better result uh, from it than just doing one way or the other. It's a combination of both. So now I'm going to select these two layers and make a new group of them. And Put, name this uh, detail um, section and then um, turn this off which is the original normal creation from endo um, and then I'm going to make the selection of here make sure we get everything in there these leaves right here need to be in there and then hit create add layer mask that's going to cut out just that one portion for us okay so now I'm going to do this uh, background here with this uh, indent um, that's going to be underneath so I'm going to create a new layer underneath and hit my get my uh, rectangle but I'm going to do round, rounded rectangle and make the radius about 
12 and then uh, drag select this into here and actually that needs to be just a hair bigger but we can go ahead and make this first just click on this uh, selection vector selection to normal and it's going to create that for us size is a bit big and I think we want it chiseled um, depth is pretty good soften it just a little bit and then I'll make it just slightly bigger so that I think I looked at the wrong part before see there's this part and then there's one more part right on top which could be a regular without now the smaller one here is going to be a different type of bump it's a little bit less uh, depth a little bit less height and it's perfectly square so the corners so I'm going to hit this and then I'm going to make it um, slightly smaller than the previous one we just did the size break down and I think that's probably good right there if we turn that on now we can see the background and then uh, I'm going to do two more of this section uh, first I'm just going to create a background so where this black is here we need something to cover that so it's just going to be a regular normal I'm going to hit the button here to create it and then I'm going to bring the, the depth all the way down just to make it a flat plane um, that way we just have something in the in the background so it's not going to show anything but okay and then we're going to create this little lip here um, and that's going to be uh, going down in the opposite direction so we'll hit the uh, the create vector to normal again wait for it and the first thing I want to do is change the slant instead of up, go to down. Um, make it a little bit bigger and make the chiseled. Looks like we're a little bit over to the left, so I'm going to make it a little bit deeper to the left, or I mean the right. Um, we could use emboss, I guess. No, we we'll probably just go better with inner. And the curve, we want to make this cone or just kind of mess around with them. I went on a sec. I think I used that one before. Um, that one looks pretty good. And so that's pretty good for that. So now what we're going to do is make the, uh, the border here, um, which is going to be, I'll just draw it out here. Um, I'll point out the spots that we're going to use. It's going to be this from here to here to here. And this is kind of like the outer box and then also here. Um, so let's do that right now. And for this I'm going to use just the regular marquee tool. Um, just because I can get, I can add more of a selection to it. I can keep on adding pieces without having to use the, uh, just the vector box. Because uh, the problem with that is you'll get edges um, that you don't really want. Uh, with this option, it'll all just be one object. Um, now, if it'll ever load, uh, I might want to do a save right now because sometimes Endo has a tendency to crash. Um, let's see here if it's going to... It's got to wait it out sometimes. Um, I'll pause the video and, and uh, until this is ready. Uh, it turns out actually when you're doing this at 4K um, and you have a lot of normals and you have a lot of layers, it takes up a lot of memory. Um, but I want to keep all those layers in case I have to go back and change something later, given that if I compress them down to one layer I won't be able to edit them later um, 
it's a destructive workflow so okay so uh, I'm just gonna fast forward through this part here um, uh, these are all kind of repetitive actions so um, I'm gonna still show them in the fast forwarding uh, part of it but uh, uh, there's no need to go into it second by second And so now we can move on to our next pieces. Um, I did a few of these pieces before I started recording, but um, I'm going to go into the process of actually uh, showing the rest of the pieces. Um, they're pretty much like the same concept, so um, I'm just going to start, continue on on our, um, our door here, the top right corner.
And um, if we just go to our layers here and just kind of clean these up, moving them back into place. Now we'll open up our endo and click on start up endo for our normals and we'll get this box here and then I'm just going to draw a shape that's in vector form and then click on this button here that uh, makes it into a normal and then I'm going to adjust the size of the uh, corners and I'm going to draw another uh, box in here to fill up the rest of the uh, background of the door and then bring down the size and then the uh, bevelness and draw this window in here and then click on the convert tool and make it a uh, negative slant or, or downwards and then change the uh, change the uh, settings to match uh, an inset window um, and you just gotta kinda play around with these settings and, and figure out which ones are good for uh, like a uh, bevel like inset window and I'm going to make the hinge and move the size uh, down a little bit and then make it chiseled and make the softness uh, go down a little bit because it's going to be a little bit more of a metal part and I'm just going to uh, make it round these edges for the uh, part of the uh, door hinge so it's a little bit round and I'm just going to copy it over for our other two hinges to make three of them and it's going to sit right on that door uh, border and then I'm going to make this like wood part here and just extend it all the way to the ground and hit the convert tool so it makes it into normal and I'll make the slant go up make our softness and then make it a little bit more size and then I'm going to throw it underneath the other layers where it should be so it's behind everything else and then we're going to make our window here uh, it's going to be um, convert it to this normal part and then slant the negative and then move the size down and make it chiseled. Um, that will make like an indent, like an inset window. And then all we need to do now is uh, the molding or the uh, in between everything from the door uh, part. So I'll just convert that to a normal and then bring our, uh, our um, uh, size down or up a little bit and move it onto the top layer uh, we're putting it behind the hinges in the door um, that way it'll show up a little bit better and uh, it's going to adjust this window here a little bit and uh, we should be good from now on this part so what I'm going to do here is uh, copy our uh, my previous um, map that I did uh, before I started the store with the block the walls and I just copied the normals from that file to this file and then we're going to go back to the original file here um, and now we have our, our same size blocks that we can use so I'm just going to take them and um, I try to make these blocks here and so I'm just going to rotate them and then move them kind of into place um, and make sure that they're all uh, together and figure out what we need exactly. Um, so probably don't need all of them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just kind of see which ones we don't need and then delete them. Uh, these ones that are off we'll just delete. Basically all we need is like two rows and I just want to make sure that it, it uh, lines up here so I'm going to turn on my grid and uh, I have it on um, uh, the whole layer on difference so I can see um, in, through the um, so I can see through the object. Basically all we need is like two rows and I just want to make sure that it, it uh, lines up here and we'll just scale these accordingly to fit this. Um, so I'm just going to scale this end and then this end here. Um, uh, 
I'm just going to drag this down to about there and then scale it and then do the same thing for this uh, this other piece here scale it up and kind of move it in between where these parts would be and we'll delete all the edges out later uh, that that are uh, you know overlapping the uh, space so it's uh, it's going pretty well here um, pretty simple stuff um, and right here I'm just going to make a little uh, like a, a border um, bevel and now we can take all these uh, this group here and add a mask to it and so that looks pretty good so I'm just going to kind of fast forward to this part and uh, it's kind of just a repetitive action I'm just li lining them up uh, like I did before.
that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.